Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. Domestic violence is a crime involving a pattern of abusive behavior in intimate relationships where one partner tries to control and dominate the other. The behavior may be physically, sexually, psychologically, or verbally abusive, with the victim left feeling scared, confused, dependent, and insecure. Now, the children of a battered parent must contend with these same fears and realities. With me in the studio today is Annalisa Deal, youth advocate with the Network Against Domestic Abuse. Welcome, Annalisa. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming in. Now, where um, where most where this uh, show will probably be airing, it's going to be uh, D Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which mm -hmm. is which is why we want to do this segment to to help get the word out. And of course, I'm a parent educator, mm -hmm. so I, I I'm calling on you to help us clearly understand what happens with parenting skills in, in domestic violence situations. Now, I would assume that we're gonna talk about both when, when the victim may still be at home, may mm -hmm. still be in the environment, and equally, even when they're in safety, when, they, when they're in a shelter, uh, it, it's still a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, you see a lot of, it's hard in this situation because the person who's the victim in this situation puts so much of their efforts and thoughts and energy into whatever will keep the abuser fine and not doing any harm. So a lot of times you'll see perfectly good parents who love their kids, who know how to discipline their kids, who would have everything otherwise right, but since they're in this situation where they're going through so much personally and then dealing with another person where they have to think of every action they do and what it's going to make that person do, a lot of them just don't think as much about their kids so you see a lot of neglect in these situations even though they don't really mean to. One of the things that I tell parents when I do my lectures and my workshops is I've come up with a list of the top 10 causes of misbehavior. Mm -hmm. One of them, number 10, which I, I should put on number one spot, is misbehavior can actually be a direct result of of, emo of adult emotional chaos going on around the child. And that can be the mom's fighting with her mother-in-law, uh, to the parents fighting, to whatever, including domestic violence. That is adult mm -hmm. emotional chaos. And that's gotta be the ultimate because a as you indicate, it, the, the victim is so lost in, in, in the terror, in the pain, that mm -hmm. they sometimes Forget about the children, and I would imagine some may even think, "Well, that's my child. They're not, you know, Daddy's fine with her." And yeah. So that, but they don't realize they're aware of all this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I would imagine, in my experience working with uh, with victims of domestic violence, they're like, "Why is my child misbehaving? What's going on here? That's mm -hmm. making my situation even worse, right?" Yeah. And it happens a lot because sometimes the child might pick up on some of the same habits as the abuser because they'll see that it works for them. Or sometimes parents will think that the kids aren't seeing what's going on, but then when you ask the kid what happened, they can give you almost more details than the parents told you about what happened. They're so in tune. Mm -hmm. Just because the child doesn't step, necessarily see it or in the right room, they can feel it. You know, I'm convinced that even though the umbilical cord was cut, when the child was born, I think there remains an emotional umbilical cord between especially mother and child, and the mm -hmm. child can feel what's going on. And of course, children don't have the ability to say, gee, mom, I'm getting some sort of feelings that you're like uh, <laughs> suffering from anxiety. What's going on? Yeah. They don't do that. They uh, pick fights with their siblings. Mm -hmm. They're not cooperative, and that's the direct result. But I have to ask you what I think may be one of the leading questions that people mm -hmm. have about DV. Why do why do why do the victims stay in the relationships? Because I I think we see a lot of them do. Yeah, and I think that's a big question in general that people always wonder. But a lot of people have to take into consideration that there's so many reasons that anyone stays in a relationship, even if it's not abusive. It's hard to figure out what's really normal and what's not. I think the question that comes into terms, especially with parenting and abuse, is people think. Why would you put your child through that because it's unsafe when a lot of times to the parent saying might be the more safe option. Like you'll hear from males that are victims that they want it to stay in the relationship because 
males are less likely to win custody over the child and if I'm not there, is she going to treat the child the same way she treated me since there's nobody to take it out on? Or women might stay in this situation because they're financially dependent on the abuser and kind of isolate it because those are some of the primary things they use and then they think if I leave that I'm going to be homeless and my kids will be out on the street would it be better for them to stay with an abuser who's not hurting them, just hurting me? I think one of the things that we as adults suffer from is we get comfortable with our surroundings, where we are, who we're with, and it's hard to imagine not having that, even when it's yeah. an abusive situation. Because people, you know, we read so many books that empower us, encourage us, and say, you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. You can make anything happen. But somehow that's easier said than done. And I would imagine, especially in a, in a a domestic violence situation like you said mm -hmm. they're afraid uh, I won't have anywhere to live where am I gonna go and it's so hard to get them past that right yeah so what are um, what are some things that we can offer parents or people who know of parents in this kind of situation I think one of the biggest things to offer is just support because a lot of the times some of the things that keep them back from getting help are believing that either they're in it completely alone and nobody is there to help them or they might think that nobody is going to believe them. So having somebody that's willing to listen and try and understand their point of view and work with them to like offer support and find the help that they're willing to get because a lot of people also try it sometimes to to push people for certain things, like saying, well, why don't you just leave? And when you get that negativity, it's kind of hard to really be like, oh, yeah, this person's right. I should just go do that. It's that easy. So I think just offering them support and kind of trying to take a step back to understand where they're coming from a little bit. What does support look like, though? When you say support, what, what does that mean? I mean, mm -hmm. take them in your home, means give them money. What? What, is um, that, what does that mean? I think it can mean a number of different things. For some people, the most important thing is just listening to them and letting them talk to, talk to you, or it could be giving them a phone number for somewhere they can call for help, or maybe they don't know where to go because they can't like, figure out how to start off somewhere new. Well, maybe you know somebody in a different area that could help them with the job or help them find a place or something. But, but what do you do if you know of someone who's in that situation and they put on plenty of makeup? Um, you, 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 hear the, you hear the violence going on, but yet they won't admit that it's going on. What, 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 would, you su what would you recommend to people who are aware of potentially of something going on? Um, I think it's, it's hard to figure out what to do in that situation because we want to kind of just be like blunt and straightforward with people but sometimes there's a lot of reason why the people might be hiding it like maybe they're really afraid if somebody finds out that that could mean like death for them or something serious so it might be important for them to keep it quiet and in that case I think trying to offer support that's maybe not as straightforward like maybe a palm card or maybe inviting them somewhere where they'll learn more information or maybe just asking a couple of questions to see if they'll come out with it on their own letting them know that you're safe to talk to because if you ask a couple like beginner questions like oh how are things going and stuff and they see how you respond they might be more likely to open up or maybe if you even shared a story about oh this just happened to so and so but don't make it sound like you're saying that happened to them, but just that you're sharing it, they might like start to relate to it. And, and you said, um, when we were talking earlier, you said it, it doesn't just affect the family, it affects the community. Mm -hmm. in, in what ways? Well, it affects the community in a lot of ways. One of the basics is that a lot of the children that grow up in domestic violence are more likely to either become abusers or become victims themselves. And there's a, also a statistic that like, 85% of prisoners come from family violence. So having it in your community makes you more likely to start things like getting involved in crimes or getting involved in substance abuse or different things for kids that are gonna affect a whole community.
because then it might make the community in general more violent and more dangerous. It's definitely, definitely a problem. Definitely a problem and it plays a role in a lot of our families and, and the community as well. Thank you so much for coming in. We can't do enough of this kind of awareness, so I appreciate your time. Thank you. Just about everyone experiences parenting challenges and with all the methodologies out there today, creating solutions for handling a child's misbehavior can be a challenge in itself. My next guest is a father of three kids who is going to challenge me with some of the top behavior issues that parents deal with today. Stay with us through the break. We'll be right back.